Jesus loves you. Romans chapter 5 verses 8 through 10. But God commendeth his love towards us, in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. The uniqueness of the love of God is something which we will never truly understand. God's supernatural love is demonstrated irrespective of merit. This is completely different to human love. Human love is given to those who are lovable. However, the love of God loves those who are unlovable. It loves those who are unlovely. It took me a while to learn that. It took me a while to learn that. It took me a while to learn the extent in which God loves people who I personally see as enemies. It took me a while to learn the extent in which God loves people who society will categorize as unlovable. Society deems so many people as unlovable for one reason or another, yet God loves those people. Human love tends to be swayed by the person who is the object of the love. We as human beings are inclined to love people who love us. As a result, we tend to attribute this human kind of love to God. We think that His love for us is dependent on a range of things. We think that His love for us is dependent on how good we are or on how much we love Him. But this human logic does not apply to God's love. God's love is not based on your performance. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He loved you whilst you hated Him, whilst you lived a rebellious life, a life that is against His laws and commands. Christ Jesus died for you. Even whilst you were a sinner, sinners sin. Sinners sin. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Let's talk about this word sin. Not just any sins. Let us talk about secret sins. What secret sins do you have in your life? Do you have a drug addiction that you hide from everyone around you? Do you have a secret sin that you constantly commit that you would hate for your husband or wife to find out? Do you have a secret sin that you would hate for the world to find out? Let's move away from secret sins and go into the realm of public sins, sins that other people know about. We now live in a culture that openly celebrates and encourages sinful behaviors and sinful lifestyles. So you may have lived openly in sin and even lived a life that celebrates sin. The Bible tells us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for you. This does not mean that Jesus Christ condones your sin or endorses your sin. No, he doesn't. But the fact remains, he still loves you. When you were out last night doing things you have no business doing, Jesus Christ still loved you. When you were going to places that you had no business going to, Jesus Christ still loved you. When you were doing things that you should not be doing, Jesus Christ still loved you. And this is a message of restoration to someone. Allow me to talk about two of the many reasons why some people run from God. One. Group one are believers. Because they are believers who have fallen into sin, and because they have fallen into sin, they feel unworthy to approach God. So they avoid God. When they try to pray, a voice says to them, are you really praying to God after what you did? Do you think you are worthy to even pray? Two, group two are unbelievers who have never experienced the new birth and they are currently living in sin, and they do not feel worthy of approaching God. These are two of the many reasons why people avoid God. Allow me to address these two reasons. God has put provisions in His Word for us when we sin. Allow me to deal with the first group of believers who have sinned. We fall under this category according to John. 1 John chapter 1, verses 8-9 through 9. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
we have the roadmap to get right with God. Confess your sin. Confess to him and he will forgive you. God is not a man that at the first sin you make, he casts you into the very pits of hell. No, don't run from God. Run to him. Confess it to him, not anyone else. Confess it with him. He is the one you need to be right with. Now allow me to deal with group two. They think to themselves, I need to get my life right first before coming to God or going back to God. You need to know that is a lie from hell. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6. But we are all as unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Even on your holiest day, your righteousness is as a filthy rag. Even on the days you believe to have followed every command in the Bible, your righteousness is as a filthy rag before the Lord. You will never be worthy to approach God in your own righteousness or your own goodness. Come as you are. Come to Him today even as you are struggling in that sin. If you're an alcoholic, come. If you're an adulterer, come. If you are a thief, come. If you are a liar, come. If you are sexually immoral, come. Come as you are, and He will transform you. And He will transform you. He came. He came to die for sinners. Jesus Christ came for sinners. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. This right here tells us why the Son of Man came. The Son of Man didn't come to please the religious crowd. The Son of Man did not come to please the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The Son of Man did not come to save those who were already righteous in their own eyes. But rather, the Son of Man, the Son of Man came to save sinners, to save lost and hopeless sinners. Look at the life of the Lord Jesus in the Gospels. Jesus seeks those who are lost from men and women, young and old, the dead and the alive, the blind and powerful, and the forgotten ones, to even those who were demon-possessed. And even if you look at your life, you can see how Jesus has found you. Heaven will not be full of Baptists or Pentecostals or Charismatics or Lutherans or non-denominational Evangelicals or Presbyterians or any other denominations. Heaven, heaven will be full of old-fashioned sinners saved by the grace of God. Don't listen to these preachers who attempt to paint the picture that God wants to send you to hell. He doesn't. He loves you. His love does not condone your sin or mean he approves of your sin or agrees with your sin. No. Nevertheless, he loves you. He loved you whilst you were in that sin. That is the nature of the love of God. John chapter 15, verse 13, King James Version. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man may lay down his life for his friends. This is my message for you today. Jesus loves you. I am here to tell you right now that Jesus loves you. You are right. I do not know what you're going through. Yes, you are right. I don't know what your situation looks like. Yes, you are right. You may have sinned horribly and you feel like there is no way you can recover or there is no way God can forgive you. I am here to tell you right now that Jesus loves you. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Nowhere in scripture are we encouraged to get ourselves in order first before we come to Christ. No, come to him in the current situation that you are in and he will change you. He will transform. He will change your very nature. Look, Jesus is not waiting for you to be perfect before he loves you. Jesus is not looking for a perfect person to show love. If people want to get married, they will say they are looking for the perfect man or the perfect woman to love so that they live together forever. Look, Jesus did not say this. He did not wait to look for perfect people before he showed love. Even when we never understood him, when we didn't even love him, when we never accepted him, Jesus showed us love. This is what I'm here to tell you today. The road may be rough, the journey may be long, the weather may be harsh, the storm may be coming directly at you, 
but I want you to know that this is not the end of everything because the love of Jesus will always be there for you. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness I have drawn thee. Again I will build thee, and thou shalt be built. O virgin of Israel, that shalt again be adorned with thy tabrets, and thou shalt go forth in the dances of them that make merry. Jesus is calling you to come to him. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Psalm 36 verse 7, How priceless is your unfailing love, O God!